Hello, this is Sunil Sundaraj with Top Preps. Uh, today, I'm happy to be speaking with Amanda Lopez, uh, first year head coach uh, for the Somerset Academy High School softball team, uh, the Florida Gold 16 and 18U team, and will be the assistant coach uh, this summer for the Puerto Rican TCI international team. Uh, once again, Coach Lopez, uh, thank you so much again for taking time out to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. And look, uh, congrats on your success. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for taking your time too. Hey, no uh, no rest uh, for the weary, you know. No, so you're, no, you're, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, Up and at him. Consistently on the go here. <laughs> oh, always at the fields. <laughs> Hey, uh, let, let's talk about uh, first uh, Somerset Academy High School, uh, first year, um, you know, uh, a big, uh, you know, transition for you, um, you know, and Absolutely. undertaking Coach Lopez. So, um, you know, let the, the viewers out there know just how everything is uh, panning out so far for you. Yeah, for sure. So, um, again, my first year at Somerset, Ac Somerset Academy, um, I was actually told in the interview that, you know, um, we have a few like we're a newer team. We have newer girls. Um, I show up to the first day of workouts and I got girls hitting balls off the wall. So I'm like, this is this isn't this isn't new. They, these aren't beginners or whatever. So um, so um, I got I have a really young team. I've got I'm mostly consisted of seventh and eighth graders i got nothing but nothing above uh, a sophomore but um young is good because young is you're able to mold you're able to to teach um and that's the biggest thing that i do think a lot of a lot of people have forgotten about this game that you know they're they're still growing up and they're still you know they you got to teach them they're they're like sponges right now you yeah. you know you tell them one thing and they're going to try to do the best they can to do that one thing exactly how you said it um and i think it starts from that that age like my right now I, i've got a i have a shortstop she's in seventh grade and um do i think that some of these girls are going to grow up to be all americans am i biased because i'm their coach probably but um <laughs> but i do think that you know i've got some i got a lot of talent on this young team and um don't ever be afraid of young. I've put them putting them up against seniors that are, you know, on their way to college already, um, and they've held their own. So um, I couldn't be couldn't be more proud of the way the season is panning out right now. Uh, we're going into districts this week, so um, so you know it's it's winter go home, and you know we're really gonna see what what they're made of here, and you know the the, the grit that they have. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's going to going to go pretty well and it's good for them to see that type of, you know, that type of competition and everything. And, you know, they have surpassed my expectations. So anything from here is 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 a plus. That's wonderful. Hey, yeah. I wonder, what for you personally made Somerset uh, Academy High School the perfect fit, uh, Coach Lopez? So um, I'm very, very young. Um, so a lot of that scares a lot of people and it scares a lot of schools. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've played this game in college and, you know, I've been coaching now for the better part of eight years. Yeah. Um, I started when I was 15. So seeing me show up to an interview, you know, other rather than some of these veteran coaches and everything, um, you know, they don't people don't really think like, hey, you know, we, no one wanted to take a shot on me, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and and not that, you know. I've gone to 30 interviews and they all turned me down. That's not the case either. It's just Somerset really gave me my first shot, my first opportunity to to go out there and like, you know, um, and to to coach these these girls on in a high school level. Um, and it is a different ball game than travel. It's um, you know, it, they're both equally as competitive, but um it's it's different. It's different seeing, you know, these these teams that are just like stacked and these teams that are not so stacked. It's it's a different ball game out there. Um, but they gave me the opportunity and um I, I do think that I've I've shown you know what I've got. I've put my girls up against the best of the best. Um so that that one opportunity was really all I needed. And um I, I kind of fell in love with the girls as soon as I as soon as I met them. Um, because again, they're young and they're hungry. They just wanted to be out there and they wanted to play. So um it, it was really the girls for me that um that solidified uh, not only this season, but seasons to come. Um, because, you know, people, we, we could be one and done, you know, if things went really, really wrong this season, um, uh, but everything went, went right for me. The, the girls, the school's been great. It was just the, the, the whole administration and everything where it, it, it kind of all just worked for me. Yeah.
No, it's fantastic that, because, um, you know, it's important to, to build that foundation, that culture, that winning, you know, I said, uh, uh, mentality, because, you know, as you said, you're dealing with very, you know, said young kids. And yeah. uh, again, uh, you know, you get into, a, you know, let's say a losing streak or something, you know, that sort, it can really, you know, it can backfire and it can really wear on a team and on a, on a player. But the fact that they've been able to, you know, as you said, surpass your expectations is fantastic. And you talked about um, uh, the administration, athletic department. We know it takes the entire village, you know, really, you know, I said to, uh, to again, um, have that uh, w- winning, you know, team. Uh, just talk about that uh, just in terms of that uh, setup, you know, from the administration, athletic department as well and facilities yeah, for sure. too. For sure. So, yeah. um, so the athletic director, he's uh, this is his first year as well. He was the okay. assistant athletic director last year. Um, and we really work together um, in terms of um, like what we got, like everything we gave to the girls. So I'm a, I played myself and I'm a firm believer if girls don't look good, they don't feel good, they don't play good. So mm-hmm. last season, um, you know, they, they had an interim coach um, that, you know, did the best he could, did the best he could with, with what he had and everything. Um, but this season, you know, I, I really, me and the athletic director, we worked hand in hand and we got the girls bags. We got the girls matching helmets. We got the girls on the uniforms and, um, you know, just me and him working together on that. It's kind of just, it's, it's refreshing because I know a lot of these other schools and not, no one in particular, but I know a lot of these other schools, um, it's, it's, it's hard to get some of that stuff because, um, you know, whether it be monetary wise or whether it be, you know, they just don't want to do it. it like the, the, the department just doesn't want to do it. Um, but he was, he has been nothing but helpful, um, in that sense of, you know, Hey, whatever you need to, to build this program, um, because you, in order to make money, you have to spend money. So, um, mm. so in order for, to, continue to get this outcome for from the girls you know um we had to give him a little bit so um um he's been nothing but helpful um even even the teachers you know i it's a it's a big change when you go from a season that you know they played maybe eight or nine games to now we're playing upwards to 20 games and you know that's getting out of class early that's helping them out with with missing assignments or with like giving them assignments early um and as as someone who is now working in like the school board with them, um, I have to side with the school board and, you know, anything they needed, I had to have their back um, because when I needed something, they had, they had my back. So uh, when I needed the girls to get out of class at 12 o'clock, you know, that's, that's the middle of the day. So, um, and, you know, no one's really given me any pushback because um, they are students before they're athletes. And I need, I needed, you know, the administration to help me out and I needed to help them out. So um, I think us working hand in hand together, it showed Somerset as a whole, you know, we are unified and we are like, you know, we work together and, you know, we're not just a bunch of individuals doing, you know, whatever we want. Um, there, there is a, there's a, there is a cause to, all the, to the chaos. Yeah. So, um, so I think the administration, the school, they've been nothing but great. Um, helping me out with, you know, a first year program. Um, and that I do think the girls, they, they see that and they like, you know, um, that causes people to want to come back to school and to want to, you know, they want to show up to class now. And, you know, because, Hey, I have a game today. I have to show up to these classes and, you know, it's, it's not pulling teeth anymore. Um, so us working hand in hand together, really, it really helped. Um, and I think, you know, the, I couldn't be any more grateful to the school, um, for, for a lot of reasons, but definitely for helping me build this program, because again, it takes, it takes a village. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what they did. So I'm um, super grateful to them, uh, to, to everyone on staff. Cause, um, they, they really helped us out. Yeah, no, excellent points. You made that, that was going to ask you about the, the role of a student athlete and, uh, yes. because it's so important to mean those, maintain those grades and, you know, oh, said, yes. uh, being able to, you know, build up that, that knowledge as well inside the classroom. Hey, talk, so walk me through what what does a daily uh, schedule entail for you, uh, Coach Lopez? So um, I actually I actually work nights. So okay. I um so let's say a Monday Monday morning, I'll wake up around seven thirty. 
Um, you know, I do what I have to do here. I eat some breakfast. Um, I'm out of the door by noon, um, whether it be running errands for the um, my travel team or my, my high school team. Um, I got practice at four o'clock. Um, from four to six, from 6.30 to nine, I go straight to my travel practice. Um, so high school from four to six, from 6.30 to nine travel. Um, and then I go to work at 11 o'clock and wow. I do it all over again the next day. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of uh, commitment and dedication. Hey, I'll talk yeah. about, <clears throat> as we know, it's it's 24-7, 365 in terms of um, also the, the strength and conditioning and preparing for a season. Talk about, you know, before this all came together this year, you know, just in terms of, um, you know, getting get everybody on the same page. And, you know, I just wanted to ask you about that, Coach Lopez. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so our season officially um, tryouts were January 24th. Um, from January 3rd, which is the day that the, the girls come back from, um, from winter break, um, we jumped right into to conditioning. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, I chose to do three times a week for those, those, I think there was three or four weeks following up to the 24th. I chose to do those three times a week. Um, and it's tough. It, it, it's, it's mentally, mentally, you have to be very, very, very ready for what's about to happen. Cause, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's not only running, it's not only, you know, doing, you know, a lot of agility. It's not only that it's you, right now you're putting, you know, you're, you're dividing your, your time between school and, you know, I'm sure some of the other girls, they were still in travel. Um, so between school travel and softball and like school softball, um, you're, there's only 24 hours in a day and you're splitting yeah. your time, you know, like exercising, running. And, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, I've, I've, my biggest thing is you have to take care of your bodies because this is, this is all you have. This is yeah. like, this is what you have if you want to go out and, you know, play college softball and everything. This is what you, your body is, your, your, you know, holy Mecca, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I told them almost every day, like, you know, you should be icing, you should be stretching. After every conditioning we ever did, mm -hmm. um, we stretched because um, I can't have someone pull a hamstring before we even hit the dirt. Yeah. Um, but um, I was... I was never big on distance running um, as a, as a collegiate athlete. Also, I was never big on that, um, but you need it. You need to, you know, you need to, you need to build that stamina. You go seven innings, no matter what. So um, you need to be able to, to give a hundred when you have zero. And that was my biggest uh, motto during these conditioning days. Um, you know, when you are absolutely tired and when you, you, your body's given out, you need to be able to give a hundred um, mm -hmm. because that's what sets you apart from a lot of these other teams and a lot of these other girls. Um, when you got nothing left in the tank, you, you got to give something. So yeah. um, that, that conditioning, those conditioning days really helped us get into seven inning games three times a week. Um, and I think that's, that's what it is. It's just building the stamina. Um, so we conditioned quite a lot, but, um, you got to make it fun for the girls. Cause this isn't a job yet. You know, when you get to college, this is your job, but right now this isn't a job. Um, you know, this is something that as a coach, you have to, there's a very thin line between, you know, fun and like, um, between them having fun and, you know, them coming out here and just doing a job. Mm -hmm. um, and right now you, you got to skate that line and, you know, make sure that they, they, they are disciplined, but they're having a ton of fun. And I think that's what I try to do throughout the season. Just make sure that they walk a straight line, but they're having a lot of fun. And yeah. that's, that's all it's about. I agree. I know, again, excellent points you made. And the fact that I think another thing is just building on top of that is the mental aspect as well. Uh, and then, uh, nutrition as well. I mean, there, there's so many things, you know, that go into it, but I think having that all set in place, uh, you know, again, contributes to, you yeah. know, success on the field as well. Uh, oh, of, uh, course. Coach Lopez. of course. Hey, let, let's uh, transition to, of course, uh, the travel team, the Florida gold, sure. uh, 16, 18, you, uh, you know, you know, pointed out uh, in your message to me, uh, highly ranked, you know, said a lot of colleges looking your team and uh, winners of the Atlanta legacy tournament. So, just uh, if you want to talk about I me mean, uh, again, uh, uh, enjoying immense success with that and uh, being able to flourish on, on the field, if you want to talk about that as well, Coach Lopez. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, 
So my my travel team, just just the same as my high school team. Um, before I even talk about them as athletes, I'm gonna talk about them as people because mm -hmm. they are just a ton of fun to be around. Um, and they kind of make your job a lot easier. Um, because if again, if I'm having fun, they're having fun, you know, they're as as people, they're just they're just fantastic people up and down. Um, right now I'm consisted of I have two 2022s. Um I don't know if I can say names here, but, um, you know, um, um, I got two 22s, both committed to, uh, one's committed to Stetson University and one's committed to Hamilton College. Mm -hmm. um, they are just fantastic people and fantastic athletes um, all in all, and they worked really, really hard to get where they are. Um, and they had a ton of fun doing it. Um, going into their, their background a little bit, um, before they got to, Florida Gold, um, they weren't having a lot of fun. And they, uh, one of them even told me that they were ready to give it up. Um, and, you know, knowing that, like, you know, that you, you put the love back into, you know, a little girl, um, mm -hmm. like that it's, it's very humbling, but, um, and now they're going off to college. So it's, it's, it's super nice to see. Um, but those are my 22s. I have one 2023. 20, um, shortstop she is she's stacked um she's got a fluid swing she's smooth on the um with her with her hands she's very soft hands um she's gonna do great things for me um uh, and for herself um majority of my girls are 2024s um and they just like to play like it's it's they just really like they work super hard um, and they just love to play this game. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a, 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 a few schools looking at looking at a, a few of my 2024s now. Um, and uh, my 2023, she's, this is her first season with me. But um, a few schools looking at my 2024s and they they kind of like, and again, I'm their coach. Maybe it sounds bi biased, maybe it doesn't. But, um, you know, they they excel under that pressure because um, this is their first time going through stuff like this, you know, having – having a scout sit back there and, you know, clock my pictures or having, you know, like me going out talking to these coaches, whatever it's, it's just kind of really cool to them. Um, and I think that's what, what's going to help them in the long run, because, um, you know, you're not nervous about it. Like, you know, like I know when I was in high school, um, you know, I, I would see a lot of these scouts, you know, look at me and everything and, you know, that's a little nerve wracking, but, um, but they, they, they thrive off of it. Like, you know, that, Hey, like they're actually like coming to look at me or whatever. So, um, so I think that's, it's, it's going to do great. Thing. They're going to do great things this summer. Um, mm -hmm. we got a big year planned for us because this is a big year for 2024s, mm -hmm. um, and 2023s. Um, so we got a big year ahead of us and, um, I think they're, they are super excited. Um, a lot of them play for great high school teams. Um, so they, I, I see a lot of most of their games and everything, and they're just super excited to, to be out there with Florida gold again. And, you know, it's like hearing that as a coach, it's very humbling because, you know, they're, they're excited to be in your presence. They're excited to be with their girls again. Um, but they, they, the, if I were to say one thing about this team is they're, they're just very gritty. Like no matter, no matter the situation, they can be down five, they can be, you know, up one, um, and they're just going to go out there and they're going to play the game. And they're, I, I do pride myself on, you know, I do think that me and my assistant coach, his name is Kyle Santana. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we've done a great job in teaching them the game that, you know, they think uh, I'm a big chess player and um, they think moves ahead. And they, you know, they, 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 of course, like every, every softball player, you should be thinking what you're going to do with the ball and everything. And mm. they think like three moves ahead. And I'm like, it's, it's awesome to see because, um, you know, a lot of collegiate athletes, that's the same thing they do. Um, and I think, I think it's awesome because the softball IQ needs to be taught mm. and, you know, um, because they don't know everything. I don't know everything. So, you know, we're all learning, we're growing up together. So I think, I think that's what sets them apart from, from some other teams is that they're very strategic and they look at where the batter holds the bat or, you know, where they are in the box or, you know, um, if, if uh, an outfielder keeps shifting, that's where the pitch is going, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they, they look at that kind of stuff and it's, it's always, it's hard to always monitor that. So I'm really glad that they've kind of taken the baton a little bit and, you know, they look at that stuff and they, they see um, my pitchers, they, you know, I'm, I'm very open um, in pitch calling 
because um you know you're looking at the batter like face to face and you know you you know yourself like hey maybe this pitch won't work but this pitch would um so i i do feel like they 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 see that and they take it upon themselves and they that's that softball iq looking at looking at the game in front of you and making sure like hey I, this won't do it but i think this will and and as a coach you have to be open to that also because um this isn't a dictatorship we're all learning together yeah. so um so i think the, the softball IQ in them, it's just, it's, it's only growing. And um, I, I think they're going to have a great year. Um, and they're, they're just super fun to be around. Like even aside from the athlete part, like they're, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, and I even have some 2025s that, um, that they're just, they're having breakout years in, in high school and, you know, in last season in travel, um, they're just, it's just super fun. It's super fun. And as a coach, you know, it's, it's hard to find. I've I got a roster of 16 right now. Um, and it's hard to find 16 girls that gel together. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's exactly what they do. They gel, they, they, they love to be around each other. They, it's just, it's a super fun environment. Um, and they know how to turn it off too, because, um, it's all fun in games until it's game time. And yeah. you, you know, you, you have to learn how to flip that switch and they've, took some trial and error but they have learned to, they have learned to turn it off and to turn it on and turn it off when it comes to once you hit those lines it's it's game time and you you know you're playing to win that's that's all it is no i agree and uh, it's terrific uh, to hear that having those you know fundamentals you know pat down because again you know in game situation you know everyone is again has to be on the same page and you know that that's that's really a you know, cool to see. Hey, I want to ask you as well. Uh, I know you uh, uh, coach also, I think, uh, the Florida black team at the 12U uh, level as well. Number one ranked team in the nation. I mean, that, yes, we were. Uh, you know, congrats on that. I mean, just to just talk about that, 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 I mean, again, when you really look back, you know, that's something, you know, I'm sure you're very proud of as well. Yes, uh, yes, I am. Um, so we, we started uh, Florida Power with, um, I actually started it with, um, my dad started it. Mm -hmm. um, and we it was me him and my brother so um it was a whole family affair um and we started out with um you know kind of girls that nobody wanted nobody wanted to it was whether it was a lot of work or whether it was you know they just they didn't think they had it in them um so we took kind of all, all the scraps down here in south florida and um and we just, we taught them and we, we, we let them take it from there. Um, my brother played collegiate ball also. Um, my dad has been coaching for upwards 20 years. So um, we, and I was still in high school actively playing. So um, when, when you look at the, the staff that we had, we, we weren't professionals, but you know, you, if we taught the girls, like, you know, that this game love and like, competitiveness needs to coexist and you need to you need to be able to really like buy into the environment that that we're built what that we're building here so um so and these girls you know they had been rejected from other teams they had been you know um you, they had gone to upwards to like 10 15 tryouts and no one else wanted them and mm -hmm. we were just starting out um we had just come from um my my sister my sister's a pitcher so um we had just come from our rec season um and you know we're thinking you know rec okay it's a lot different she had played travel before and everything but um we're like we we want to take over we think we can do you know something great with with these kids so um so we took it on and um we had a we started off pretty rough um you know first time all together whatever but um I, I've, I've always said if the girls don't know you they don't like you they don't respect you and they won't perform for you mm -hmm. so um we got really really close with these girls and everything we said they really took it into consideration and we just taught them the game and we were like athleticism is always going to take over as long as you know like you know the basics and the and you know even the the more advanced like you know you know what to do with a ball if it's hit to you like you're gonna get it done um and we started off shaky um uh, and then we just we turned it on and mm -hmm. we went on a run and 
all of a sudden, like we're beating, you know, at the time we were 12, we're beating 14 and 16 new teams. And, um, you know, people ask us all the time, like, you know, hey, like that was one of the best teams you you guys had or whatever, like, hey, why'd you give it up or whatever. Um, um, at, at a point, you know, my, my dad, he was like, I'm ready to retire. And, um, and I was like, dad, I get it. Um, so me and my brother, we were like, you know, can we do this like by ourselves or whatever? Mm-hmm. And um, at the time we didn't want to do it without my dad. So um, we, we built it up. We, we ended it on the highest note we could. We were ranked the number one team in the nation mm-hmm. and just a few girls that nobody wanted and um, that nobody wanted to take the time on. And we all of a sudden, like the rankings came out and, you know, we're getting like phone calls and they're like, they're like, hey, you know, you guys are like, you guys are ranked. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, what are we ranked? And, uh, and um, they're, they're telling us and they're like, yeah, they're like, you guys have like a powerhouse. And I was like, well, we always knew that it's just no one else wanted to give, you know, these girls. I had a shortstop that was like four feet, four, four feet tall. Um, and she's throwing people out from the five, six hole. And like, you know, it's just it was it was good to see because, um like not only it had nothing to do with us it had everything to do with the girls that they proved a lot of people wrong and you know it wasn't supposed to work as well as it did so um when we did when that ranking did come out and you know we were were ranked number one um we were like yeah we knew that like yeah we, we knew we were we were we were a good team and everything but um no one else wanted to give them the time of day um and I think it's awesome to see that they they proved a lot of people wrong and you know um, and they they learned a ton and I still speak to some of those girls um, they talk to me about grades they talk to me about like you know what's going on in life and um, I think it's awesome because um, every time they do see us they you know their face lights up and they like we we did change a few lives like you know things weren't going great for a lot of for some of these girls and now they um, you know they're still here they're playing uh, mostly all of them still play um, high school and everything so it's it's awesome to see that you know, we were able to make that type of impact on them. And, and they also got some, you know, notoriety for it. Yeah. Um, number one team in the nation is it's hard to come by and, mm-hmm. you know, they did it all themselves. So um, I give, I owe everything to them because um, they really jump started my career and, you know, um, and they, they were just awesome. They were another great group of girls to be around. So. That's great. Yeah, it's it's always good to have that underdog mentality, you know. I said uh, exactly. People again don't believe in you, and you know, I said uh, I said taking it, uh, you know, giving these girls that opportunity. That the fact that you know, I said you know, no one else wanted to, and you know, being able to turn that out, around that that's that's uh, again tremendous. And you know, you talked about um, you know this being a family affair, uh, coaching with you know your dad, wreck at West Pine, you know, West Pine for three years you know, back-to-back championships, uh, just, you know, runner-up last year. Just, just talk about how special that was, uh, you know. Oh, it was awesome. Your, your um, yeah. We argued a lot, argued a lot, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> we did argue a lot. Um, yeah. But um, it's it's just the fact that we always thought about the same things and we um, and we took every game, like, you know, it was, it was the last. And we, my dad's the type of guy, you know, um, we – I'll say it and you know it doesn't make sense he says it it's gold so the, we, we argued a lot in the dugout but um yeah. at the end of the day we're saying the same things and we're we're you know we're, we're we want the same goal but um it was super fun like it was something that I could never that it's one of my core memories you know coaching out there with him being there with him um it's just it was something I, I could never get back and something that I'd never want to, you know, lose. Um, even today I come, I'll come home from, from a loss or from a win and it's, you know, what could you have done better? And, you know, it, that's awesome because you need, you need that balance, that, that yin, yin and yang. Um, and that's, that's what he was to, to me and my brother. He was, he was our mentor. He was our, you know, he's, he was everything um, in the dugout. You know, we, we disagreed, but it was always for, for coaching purposes it was never like hey you're wrong because you're wrong like no I think you know maybe we should go this route and we would always find you know that happy medium that compromise but um but it was it it was something that I would never never give up in a million years Mm -hmm. um and he he taught us everything we knew about the game and everything and to to be on the other side of the fence with him was just was it was just awesome it was just super like I would I would wouldn't give it up for anything 
That's great. Hey, um, just a couple more. Just wondering when it comes to uh, coaching, uh, you know, women's softball, you said been doing it now for what, eight years now and seeing the growth of the sport, you know, and how much it's evolved over the years uh, and changed. Uh, I'm just what, again, what, what, what is it about it that makes it special? I mean, just, you know, maybe whether you're, you know, said in the dugout, on the practice field, you know, off the field, just some of the intangibles coach Lopez. Um, coaching women's sports. Um, it's, it's, it's just something that I never thought I would be doing. Um, because I am a woman, I know how, how hard women are. Um, and, but they are just, they play with that type of, I'm not even supposed to be here. So I'm going to give it everything I got. And, um, you know, women, whether it be political, whether it be the the pay rates, whether it be anything, we've just we've as a whole, we're we're not even supposed to be in the conversation as mm-hmm. of athletes. You know, um, I know collegiate athletes right now, they're so good at this sport. And if they were men, they would be in, you know, high rises and million dollar mansions. And the fact that they're not, I think that drives them. And I think that that shows them that, you know, you're again, you're not supposed to be here. So why not give it your all? And why not, you know, just go out there and, you know, do, do what you have to do and just have a ton of fun. Um, and I think, I think women, they know that there is a cap, you know, um, one of my best friends, she's at her fifth year, um, at, in college and it does she, is she thinking about going professional? No, she knows that, you know, I've, I've got a few, a few more weeks here, you know? So, um, and I think for men that the ceiling is a little bit, and again, I'm not comparing the two. Like, I don't want to mm-hmm. compare the two. I don't want to get into any of that. Yeah. But um, yeah. but um, there's there's a professional. There's a there's whatever. And in softball, the professional is the the you know the the pick of the litter. Like, you got to be the best of the best. Um, so I think we play so hard and we have so much fun because we know there's an end at some point. You know, softball isn't everyone's life. Like, you're not you're not like everyone's not going to play professional softball and everything. So um, I think there there's an end there's an end to to the love the, the you know you're gonna put on your cleats for one one last time yeah. um and I think that's why we play so hard and so so gritty I think we just we go out and we we just have a ton of fun and I think and men too and men you know they they go out and they do whatever whatever they have and yeah. in but in women's sports I think um again I think we're not even supposed to be in the conversation so we play like it's our last um and I think that's I think it's awesome I think all women in any sport in any sport um, men or women I think you that's how it should be you go out and you play the hardest you can like it's your last game yeah you know another serious topic and I, I just wanted to get your take on it has been you know mental health and you know we've seen that uh, sadly you know here uh, recently in college uh, softball with you know I think it's three or four athletes I think maybe now four that uh, sadly have taken their own life and I want, want to ask you you know I'm sure that's something I you know has said you know you thought of maybe of a dress with the team or just just wanted to get your um, you know just your opinion on that as well uh, coach Lopez no no of course yeah. um yeah it's it's a conversation that a lot of people don't like to have they don't yeah. like to get um you know serious with with um their players and everything and it's is it understandable? Yes. Is it unacceptable? Yes. Because you, you are the first line of defense, especially from a student athlete um, standpoint, like these girls see you the majority of their lives and the majority of their days are spent with you. All summers are spent with you. And I think, um, I think it has to be talked about. And I think um, as a student athlete, no one talks about the pressure that, you know, not only from, from sports, but from school to be able to balance all of that, um, you know, and I think there, there, sometimes there are telltale signs and sometimes there aren't. And that's why you, I do think you have to talk to all of your athletes about mental health and about, um, about what being a student athlete is, especially at the collegiate, correct, the collegiate, um, the, especially in the collegiate level, Mm -hmm. um, being a student athlete isn't, it's not all rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes it gets ugly. And sometimes you, you feel like you're alone and you feel like, you know, I can't talk to my coach about this. I can't talk to some, you know, my teammates about this because, you know, you feel you get into a dark place and you get into, 
you know, um, I'm alone and I have to figure this out because hundreds of other girls are going through the same thing or, or boys, some hundreds of other boys are going through the same thing. You know, there there's thousands of student athletes, but not every case is the same. And, you know, not everyone is is as you know, tough and can take a lot of things and, you know, and not tough, but you, you know, like it's sometimes it wears you down and, and it's okay to not always be okay, especially as a student athlete, because um, you have to talk these, these things through and you, you know, don't ever feel alone. Um, like I said, I, I, I talked to some of my some of my previous girls still about, you know, about life, they, whether they was they they had a hard childhood or not, or whether, you know, they're going through some some things. Um, I think I said in the beginning, you know, love and competitiveness have to coexist because um, some girls feel super, super alone and there's nothing you can, you know, not a lot that you can say that'll make them feel less alone, but you just have to be there. You're mm-hmm. if you're there with them and, you know, um, no one really talks about, you know, being a student athlete and being under that rigorous pressure, Uh, going to 6am workouts, straight to class, straight to practice, and then straight back to class, you barely have time to eat, barely have time to shower. So, um, you know, that's a lot of pressure, especially, you know, 17, 18 year olds, and, and no one talks about it. And I think that's a conversation that has to be had with all athletes and everyone wants to be the change, but no one wants to do the work. Yeah. So um, I do think that that's, that's a very big issue in today's athletes. Um, and that conversation, although it may be a tough one and you have to have it because um, we continue to lose student athletes and, you know, no one really knows why, but everyone they do know why everyone knows the answer. It's just, you know, um, a lot of things get in the way of, of, you know, being a student athlete and everything. And, you know, um, it's just a conversation that should be had and should be had. And, you know, um, more coaches need to, need to talk about it and need to, when you're, you're yelling at a girl or when you're, you're trying to motivate them, it should be coming from a place of love and not anger, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, So I think, I think everyone should be having the conversation, whether you're an athlete or not. Um, Mental health is a big, is a big thing now and, um, and always. So I think that's definitely a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. And I think it was, it was also with the COVID-19 pandemic, which we're still in the midst of no matter what, I think also played such a, critical factor in it as well i mean that isolation as well i mean right. a lot of uh you know players didn't matter what year you were i mean you felt very you know felt badly for the seniors especially but even for the freshmen you know sophomores and juniors as well uh hey i you know the final one or the last two is that um you know, you're going to be the assistant coach of the Puerto Rican TCI international team this summer. That, that's got to be a sense of pride and joy for you. I, I yes. had to ask you about that. So I definitely wanted to give you that uh, opportunity to talk about that as well. Yes, yes, it is. Um, I was, you know, the, it's just the, the opportunity given. Um, I, I do want to want to um, give a little shout out to Willie Verrett. Um, mm-hmm. He's the coach of Doral High School. Um just approached my, I actually approached my dad, you know, hey, um, I was going to be in, in Colorado anyway. Um, and he was like, um, you know, have her come on and, you know, call, call pitches. My, my, my saving grace is calling pitches. I was a catcher. So, you know, calling pitches is something I'd love to do. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and he's like, hey, just bring, bring her on and, you know, let's, let's do this thing together. And, um, and it's just, I, th- I'm, I think we're going to have so much fun. Um, and being able to represent, you know, like Puerto Rico and, you know, my, my dad was ecstatic. Um, my, my parents were, were super happy and, um, and, you know, and then um, seeing all these girls from different states, whether it be, you know, down here in Florida, whether it be up in, you know, California, wherever, um, come together and we're essentially we're meeting each other at Colorado, like in the hotel, um, which I think it's super fun because um, that's how you grow the game. You continue yeah. to meet new people. You continue to, to whatever. Um, I'm coaching with a staff that I've never coached with before. And I think, I think um, any opportunity to, to, to kind of build connections, to kind of build, you know, yeah. other coaching styles, I think you're, it's only going to benefit the whole um, and it's only going to benefit the game. And, you know, I, I was actually just looking at 
the the international website they have all the teams all the girls and everything mm -hmm. and it's kind of awesome to see i didn't me myself i didn't even know softball was this big like they have a great britain team and you know they have a, a south korean team and i'm like you know this yeah. is pretty awesome you know um it's 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 a little like the, you get a little taste of the olympics um yeah. the but um i i think it's super cool that you know that programs like this exist when i was in high school whether they existed or not i, I really don't even know so um I think it's awesome to to be able to see all these all these cultures come together and you know just play the game and yeah. I think that's how it should be you know um, and down there in Colorado um, I'm gonna be playing against some of my girls that are on different different cultures or whatever yeah. um, I have a few girls on the Cuban team um, some girls on the North the Central American team so um so I think you know it's gonna be I think it's gonna be really really fun um, and just to see you know, how big this game really is, it's, it's kind of, it's humbling because, you know, you're, you're looking at teams from all around, all around the world that are just, and for our cultures all around the world that, that it's awesome. Um, I would have never imagined, um, you know, this game being that big, but, um, but it is. And a lot of people, you know, they, they don't really know that. And me and myself, I didn't know that, but um, it's super fun. It's going to be super fun. Um, I, I, the coaching staff where, where I think we're going to gel together. Great. Um, the girls, you know, um, girls are easy. They, they, you know, they see each other and you make one play in the field and you're, you're besties for life. So, um, so, um, so I think it's going to be super fun. Um, I, I am actually super proud that, you know, I was able to, to get on such, such a prestigious, you know, um, tournament and everything. And, you know, again, thank you to Willie. Cause um, he just, he just, again, took a shot on me and he was just like, let's, let's go win a gold, uh, which is exactly what we're, what we're planning to do hopefully. But, um, yeah. but I think it's going to be super fun and it's, it's, it's awesome to be able to represent um, my heritage and everything. And, Hopefully we bring Puerto Rico something. Yeah, no, it's outstanding to, to have that diversity and, you know, you know, it's truly a global game. And um, even yeah. before we came on there, we're talking about the social media and, you know, you look at uh, for the athletes, all the training videos and, you know, how they're able to really dissect and, you know, break down their game. But the fact that here, I'm sure this is going to gain a lot of, uh, you know, said, uh, you know, notoriety and that uh, it will, you know, be well advertised and, you know, it'll be good to see, you know, all these kids and the, the coaches, right. you know, uh, get that platform, you know, to, you know, just highlight their skills. No, of hey, course. Uh, Coach Lopez, um, you get the last word. That's what I always do in my interviews in terms of um, uh, just final message of family, friends, uh, you know, for the players, you know, uh, the schools that you've been at and especially currently right here with the uh, Somerset Academy High School and, uh, you know, even with uh, now the Puerto Rican TCI international team. So I, I, I give you uh, the floor, Coach Lopez. Yeah, no, I just I want to thank you. I want to thank Top Preps for um, for even having me on this interview, um, you know, where what what we're trying to do, the environment we're trying to build and everything. It's um, I think, you know. I think a lot of teams, um, you know, I think they're they're starting to to do that. They're starting to to show a lot more love, and you know, um, and because the girls will perform for you. Girls will they will come through for you if you 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 hit them when you need to hit them, uh, and then you love them when you need to love them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I do think I'm doing the best of my ability in in those those terms, um, and I think. Again, not even speaking about my girls as athletes, but as people, they're super fun to be around. And, you know, and that's all it's about. You know, it's just people helping people. And I do this voluntarily all my life. Um, so I think I think as a former collegiate athlete, um, more collegiate athletes should get into this because you know exactly what is what it entails. Um, so I think to to my girls at Somerset, you know, thank you. Uh, for everything really for, for, again, my first opportunity as a high school coach, um, for my girls at Florida gold, um, you, I owe them everything as well. Um, and, you know, to any girl that I've coached in the past, you know, I still think about them and I still, you know, I still make sure I still follow them. Um, I'm, you know, on game changer 24 seven, you know, softball is, is what we do. So, um, to any girl that I've ever coached or any coach that I've ever coached with, um, you know, it's just, this is, 
definitely all for you guys. Um, and I'm just super humbled that I'm able to have the opportunity to talk to to you guys and to to kind of share my story a little bit and my girl story. So um, thank you to you and to Top Preps again for for everything, um, for everything you guys have done today. Thank you, Coach Love Lopez. An incredible honor and privilege. And again, uh, wishing you uh, continued success. Thank you.